Born of binary and sculpted of script, Hatsune Miku's origins are quite mysterious indeed. Almost as mysterious as how some people can actually dislike Len. Oh but while physically digital, Miku's influence and spirit spans the globe. Meaning, Hatsune Miku is actually the most famous girl in the world. Let her tell it. But a lot of people don't even understand on a fundamental level what a Miku is. Hatsune Miku is part of the Vocaloid synthesizing software, which can transmute your voice into that of various unique characters, and Miku happens to be the most popular of them. So that means that there's no one Miku or sole entity, despite the fact that she tours internationally, for example. Anybody with the Vocaloid software can make music using Miku's vocal likeness and contribute to the ever-evolving zeitgeist of Miku lore. But who cares? You do, right? Clicked on this video. But why would an aspiring music producer elect to channel their artistic voice through that of a teenage anime girl? Because Vocaloid is the coolest shit ever. But also for other actual reasons. To get the obvious out of the way, Hatsune Miku is absurdly marketable. Which, in tandem with the anonymity she provides, makes her generally just a great way to get your music out there. And now this isn't to say that Vocaloid artists aren't just as talented as others or none of them could sing or anything stupid like that, but our world does crawl with people, including myself, who cannot sing for the life of them. Miku and other Vocaloids, though, have crazy vocal range, which just allows people with less formal vocal training or education, for example, to utilize a much greater breadth of tools. In general, Vocaloid is just a fantastic software for newcomers. Given that it provides privacy to make you less self-conscious, and imbues any song with an inherent degree of charisma because... It's fudging Miku. Maybe the most prominent factor to Miku's success is the strong community which has taken form around the music. I think the concept of being able to personify a community or group is unbelievably cool. When you see Miku, you see a character which over time has been defined by the disparate seas of fans who use her likeness. In that sense, she represents something larger than any one person, and truly stands for us all. And this is part of why Miku is so incredibly popular. Because when we look at Miku, we see something much grander. Miku is comprised of a massive, sprawling community, and as such, she represents them all. Everyday people like you and me, anybody, can contribute to who Miku is, and that's beautiful. The true sense of creative freedom that this enables makes for some seriously good music, as well as a very refreshing dynamic with the artist. While most fandoms, like most K-pop groups I know of given my incredibly cursory understanding of the genre, and like Beyonce and stuff, these artists are straight up deified, they transcend fan service, and are put on such a pedestal as to make them completely unrelatable. This can be cool too for its own reasons, but it's not really my thing. Miku is just like another one of the lads though. Memes often depict her as being like funny stupid or lazy, rude, and all that other good stuff. I guess in that way Miku's fanbase is kind of similar to, I guess, I guess Miku's kind of like NBA. Okay, maybe that comparison isn't totally fair. Bruh. And I'll go on to talk about more specifically why there is this compulsion to use Vocaloid software and the characters associated as your literal artistic voice. Sometimes music, like any art, is best expressed through the voice of a particular person. Miku's software allows you to become a teenage girl pop star, for example. But I love how much more resonant some of these stories are when sung through Miku. Most producers I'm personally familiar with are adult Japanese men, but due to the increased marketability granted by Miku singing, they can explore a wider variety of emotions and subject matter without sacrificing all palatability. The truth of this world is that, if you're talking about something shameful, it helps to be an intrinsically charismatic mega pop star who's also adorable. Shocking, no. But Miku represents something else that people can sometimes overlook, and that's vulnerability. Depicting yourself as a young girl communicates that you have yet to fully realize yourself and are still uncertain. A lot of more experimental Vocaloid producers lean into this in a literal sense for their promotional art. They depict Miku and other Vocaloids as chained, bound, injured, or even pathetic. 
This functions as a very visceral visual depiction of the themes covered so often in Vocaloid music, which I don't see commonly covered in other genres. Maybe because of the anonymity, or the inherent charisma, or the wider variety of personalities which can be made marketable, an overwhelming amount of Vocaloid songs are about very heavy subject matter which, for the most part, I can't even mention explicitly on YouTube. Though there are thousands of great songs with more upbeat subject matter, one of the most recurring themes I've found personally is that of self-loathing. Feelings of weakness and worthlessness can be felt throughout the lyrics of producers like Wawaka, Usushio Shisu, and Kikuo, for example. Just look at these beautiful yet disturbing landscapes that Kikuo uses as cover art. Miku is often used to show the beauty that lies within dysfunction, and to emphasize how much your environment shapes what kind of person you become. Because no matter how she's behaving, I still see her as Miku. There are so many producers out there using this software to make real art, whether it be uplifting or depressing, and she's able to perform it all. I also find her to be so comforting. She typically comes from such a down-to-earth place in such a tight-knit community, but is able to be a mega pop star. I think it's cool that we may be progressing into an era of so much more opportunity for so many more different types of people to become famous. Miku is great because everyday people are great, talented, and beautiful. Bound by the robotic voice, they've all worked together to make what are some of my favorite songs. And this greatness is actually put on display as a pop star should be. This is where Vocaloid differs from YouTubers and other public figures, for example, who are able to become famous, but very rarely ever touch that status of idolization. YouTubers are a great example because the type of content is more intimate and it just feels like they're one of your boys. But Miku is like simultaneously one of your boys and a larger than life icon. The fact that Miku can have all the qualities of an everyday person seems to be a movement in the right direction in terms of celebrities in my opinion. We love to see ourselves and our idols and what really is the difference between us and Miku? Unlike AI, for example, which has a different fundamental root than human consciousness, Miku is a way to propel us into the future whilst remaining connected with more humble beginnings. Anyone can be a star, and just because you are one doesn't mean you can't be a regular ol' average Joe too. Now, for those of you who have made it this far in the video, you may be wondering why there's such a melancholic backdrop, and it comes down to something entirely personal. Throughout my life, whenever I've seen Miku or the fanbase surrounding Vocaloid, I've been instilled with this bizarre feeling of sadness at the fact that I never had a community like that that was centered around something I was so passionate about, which led to feelings of dissatisfaction and jealousy. And it was ironically through Vocaloid that I was able to identify and work through that because I was reached out to by the lyrics of some of my favorite producers. So, that's pretty ironic. <laughs>